This afternoon at the Senate Foreign uh, Relations Committee, we, uh, Tony Blair was here, the Quartet Middle East Envoy. Uh, he testified before Senator Kerry's committee. Um, we uh, had an opportunity to sit with Tony Blair uh, today and talk uh, about his uh, views on what needs to happen next on the peace process. Here's the interview with Tony Blair. Thank you very much for, uh, for doing this. L let me begin with what's going on here in Washington over the next two weeks. The President has set an extraordinary uh, and a very ambitious agenda for himself. Three heads of state uh, and then traveling to Cairo. What do you think would be the, the sort of signposts, what we should be watching for as we go down the road over these next two, two weeks to see if, in fact, something is happening and progress is being made? The single most important thing to understand is that this president, who has got immense authority in America and in the world, uh, at the very beginning of his time in office, is saying that it is a national priority in the strategic interests of America to get a two-state solution to the Israel-Palestine question. Now, I think, despite all the challenges and all the difficulties, that is an enormously important starting point. And I suspect that over these next few weeks, I mean, he will obviously be in, in listening mode, but I think he will also be impressing on all his interlocutors that this issue is for him genuinely a vital interest and that he is going to be expecting people to take the decisions necessary to get to, to implement that two-state solution. We've seen uh, a bit of a, a dance taking place between the president and Netanyahu. Interesting, I, I remember Clinton used little very subtle forms of pressure along the way to sort of get the Israelis to do certain things. Netanyahu is being uh, exposed to much of that, um, little signals and signs making it clear that a two-state solution is what is required. He's been loath to accept it to date, but may accept it uh, as a sort of a grand gesture. The question is, what would be, in your mind, the requirements of acceptance of a two-state solution? Not just saying two states, but what do you think would be the, the, the minimal requirement of what that state should include? Well, I think th that's absolutely the right question. I, I think, I mean, it's one thing for people to commit to a two-state solution, and in a sense, if there is a recommitment by the new Israeli government to that, well, that's, that again is a, is, is, a, is a useful advance, in a sense, for mm -hmm. them. But for the rest of the world, the question is, well, how do you get there, and what does it mean? And I think there we will examine really three aspects. First of all, there has to be a credible political negotiation, so people will expect to see that. Secondly, there needs to be real measures of change, uh, particularly on the, the, the West Bank. Um, not just you know, economic projects, but um, as Palestinian capacity to do security grows, lifting the access and movement restrictions, lifting the weight of occupation, as it were. And thirdly, that there is a, a, a framework for the Palestinian Authority to take on the responsibility to do the security, not just building the security forces, as General Dayton's been helping them do, but also, as I know Prime Minister Fayyad wants, to build the whole structure of a functioning criminal justice system. Now, I think, in other words, what people will be asking is, well, what is the substance that comes beneath that two-state vision articulation? But Netanyahu has said before, uh, autonomy or some sort of self-rule, but they can't control airspace. They're not going to control borders. They're not going to control resources, not to speak of Jerusalem, et cetera. Uh, to what degree can you put limits on sovereignty and still have a state. I mean, I, I, go there hmm. if, if you yeah. would. I, I Control of access, egress, for example, is that critical? Look, I think if you really want to deal with the security preoccupation of Israel, there are ways of dealing with it. You know, there are, there are ways of ensuring that, that there are sufficient guarantees, that there are sufficient, you know, and there can be restrictions, in a sense, on what the Palestinian state can do. But the basic element of statehood's got to be there, which is that the Palestinians have control of their own territory. And for, for, um, for me, having spent now you know, a lot of time looking at this in depth um, in these past 18 months, for me, the issue for the Palestinians is absolutely simple. They, I think, are prepared to negotiate that two-state solution, and that will re require difficult compromises all round on issues like Jerusalem and refugees and so on and so forth, and they understand that. But what they want to know is that if they are prepared 
to make these changes in the way that they govern themselves, which is what Prime Minister Bayad and President Abbas are, are doing now, that the Israelis really will get out of their territory and let them run it. Now, I think you can deal with these issues to do with the security preoccupation of the and concerns of the uh, Israelis. I think that's possible to do if, if um, people decide it's important enough to, to find a way through that. But the Palestinian statehood has got to be an independent, viable state.